Good afternoon, everyone. So for today, I am going to do the reporting about the core subject NSTP, part 3 of this module, 6th topic, entitled Foreign Body Airway Obstruction or FBAO. So by the way, I am Rufa May S. Dominguez, BSOA, First Year College, Section B. So let's start. So, FBAO, we can relate FBAO into choking. So, here, the picture illustrated, the girl is experiencing choking incidents. So, what was the definition of choking? So, the definition of choking is, choking is defined as a foreign object that is stuck in the pharynx or back of the throat or trachea or windpipe that causes a blockage of muscular spasm in the airway. So, from the definition being stated, foreign but foreign object here is about the food we intake, like mm, meat or an other unnecessary things like marbles um, that can cause choking. So, choking is a psychosociological response to sudden airway obstruction. Foreign body airway obstruction, or FBAO, causes a syphysia and is a terrifying condition occurring very acutely, with the patient often unable to explain what is happening to them. If severe, it can result in rapid loss of consciousness and death if first aid is not undertaken quickly and successfully immediate recognition and response of are of the utmost importance so from this definition hmm, foreign body airway obstruction can be reduced by immediate recognition or response so that's it next incidence so what was the inc incidence of choking Choking is a risk whenever food is consumed. About 3,000 deaths caused by foreign body airway obstruction or choking are reported every year. So, ganun kadami yung mga namamatay. From a U.S. study, suggests an incidence of that due to FBAO of 0 0.66 per 100,000 population. So, the study of choking incidents. Causes of choking. Choking usually occurs during eating. So, we experience choking while eating. In adults, meat is the most common cause of obstruction. Although a variety of foods and foreign have been the cause of obstruction in children and some adults. So here, meat is the most common cause of obstruction or choking. Because it's stuck here in our... Our so here our pharynx, back of the throat, our trachea, but it depends upon the person gets choked. It's either children or adult. So risk factors. Risk factors of choking is are large pulitude, pieces of food, elevated blood alcohol levels or high blood. Mataas yung blood alcohol levels natin. Dentures or dentures is dentures is a removable re replacement for missing teeth and surrounding tissue. So, that was the dentures. It is like pustiso ba yan? Or like mm, yung mga nilalagay natin sa ating mga ngipin as a replacement. Kumbaga. And lastly, playing, crying, laughing, and talking while food or foreign bodies are present in the mouth. So we are advised to not do not talk if your mouth is full. <laughs> so that's it. Prevention of choking. First, cut food into small pieces and chew slowly and thoroughly, especially if you are wearing dentures. So, yan. Next. Avoid excessive intake of alcohol before and during meals. 
excessive intake of alcohol before during meals. It is like it should be avoided to drink like soft drinks or acid drinks before and during meals because it can cause cause choking. Yeah. So it must be it must be prevented. Third, avoid laughing and talking during chewing and swallowing. So we are advice to eat normal. Do not go somewhere or stay playing and while you are eating. Fourth, prevent children from walking, running, or playing with food or foreign objects in their mouth. So I have mentioned lately, eat normal. Eat normal. Like, you just sit in your chair and eat. Yeah. <laughs> and lastly, keep foreign objects like marbles, beads, and thumbtacks away from infants and children. So here, um, any daycare personnel like the mother and father of the child and lahat ng mga nag-aalaga sa ating mga bata or sa mga small children, it is advisable to keep objects high. High. Above. Na hindi maabot ng mga bata. So, next. Recognition of foreign body airway obstruction. Because early recognition of airway obstruction is the key to successful management. It is important to distinguish this emergency from fainting, stroke, heart attack, drug overdose, or other conditions that cause sudden respiratory failure but are managed differently. Airway obstruction may also be due to infectious the infections that cause airway swelling. Children with an infection with an infectious cause of airway obstruction need prompt medical attention in the hospital emergency department and time should not be wasted in a failure attempt to relieve the obstruction. That's it. So that was the recognition of foreign body airway obstruction talk about. Next, CPR and airway obstruction management in infants and children. Cardiopulmonary resuscitation or CPR and airway obstruction management are first aid for choking for children over 8 years old is the same as for adults, but for small children or 1 to 8 years old and infants less than 1 year old, there are important differences. differences. These differences is in technique are necessary because of the small size and physical immaturity of this age group. So applying CPR and airway obstruction management, it depends upon the age or the physical immaturity of the age group. Yeah. Since the course include only an introduction to basic life support for infants and children, it is recommended that the following personnel participate in a complete pediatric BLS course offered separately. First, daycare personnel or like our parents, personal or other facilities who take, who took good care or of our children. Next, parents of infants at high risk for sudden infant death. All healthcare personnel and professional rescuers. Parents of infants and children. Next, causes of sudden death in infants and children. Cardiac arrest in infants and children is usually the result of lack of oxygen to the, due to respiratory difficulty or arrest. The major events that may necessitate CPR in children include injuries, suffocation, caused by a foreign objects or toys, foods, plastic covers, etc. Smoke inhalation sudden infant death syndrome and infection infections so injuries account for nearly 9000 fatalities in children every year of this 45 percent involve motor vehicle accidents 7 percent drowning and 20 and 21 percent burns firearms and poisoning so 
this paragraph is all about the causes of sudden death in infants and children. So, prevention ulit. Prevention. It is important to remember the time spent mastering CPR techniques is much less productive than time sp spent preventing the situation leading to their use. The majority of emergency situations require CPR are preventable and special attention must therefore be paid to producing environments for children that are safe. Children should be prevented from walking, running, playing, or crying with food or foreign objects in their mouth is automobiles. Age appropriate restraints, including infant car seats and seat belts, should be used. Children should be taught to swim and water safety should be emphasized. It's clearly stated on how to prevent choking. One rescuer CPR child 1 to 8 years old so here is the example on how to do the cpr to child or to children child 1 to 1 to 8 years old you should perform cpr for small children as you would for adults and older children except for three differences first use the heel of one hand in chest compression rather than use both hands. Second, depress the sternum one to one half, one to one one half in chest, or two point five to three point seventy five centimeter in chest compressions rather than rather that one and one half to two inches. And third, give one rescue breath for every five chest compression. So here. First is airway. So, this picture, I retrieved this from WikiHow and how to illustrate this airway. First, assessment. Do the assessment. Determine unresponsiveness by gently shaking the shoulder and asking, are you okay? Next, call out for help. Position the victim on his or her back, taking care to support the head and the neck in case of injury. And lastly, open the airway using head tilt or chin lift, as, uh, as what the illustration, the picture shows above, showed above. Next, be breathing. So here, assessment for breathing. Determine breathlessness. Kung humihinga ba siya or mahina na. With your ear over the child's mouth, look, look mouth, child's mouth, look at the chest and look. Listen and feel for breath while maintaining the airway open. <laughs> Give to rescue breath, mouth to mouth with 1 to 1, 1 half seconds per breath. Observe the rise and fall of the chest. Yeah, chest. So third, C, circulation. First, we do the assessment for circulation. Determine pulseness. So usually, we determine pulse here, 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 um, and so many more. That yan yung kasi alam ko eh. Dito lang tsaka ano, yan. <laughs> Feel Feel for the carotid pulse with one hand while maintaining head tilt with the other. Activate the EMS system. So, so what was the EMS system here? Um, EMS is the emergency medical services. It is a system that provides emergency medical care. Once it is activated by an Incident that causes serious illness or injury, the focus of EMS is emergency medical care of the patient. But but here, but EMS is much more than a ride to the hospital. EMS, calling EMS, activating EMS or like ambulance, call 911. 
Activate the EMS system if someone else is now present. That person should activate that the EMS system. Begin chest compression. Find proper hand position in as in adults. Compress one to one one half inches or two point five to three point seventy five centimeter using the only the heel of one of the hand. Compress the chest 80 to 100 times per minute, giving one breath for every five compressions. Next, do 10 cycles of compressions and rescue breath. Check the pulse. If no pulse, give one rescue breath and continue compression with rescue breath. Next, we'll feel for the pulse pulse every few minutes so every few minutes feel for the pulse i-check natin yung pulse dito or here pero mas okay pag dito if no pulse returns check for spontaneous breathing if there is no breathing give one rescue breath for every 4 seconds or 15 rescue breath per minute and monitor pulse if there is breathing maintain an open airway and monitor breathing impulse. Patuloy pa rin dapat tayo mag-monitor ng breathing impulse natin. So, that's it. So, that was the three things to do. Applying CPR. Airway, breathing, and circulation. So, for further, for further understanding, here is the method when a person gets choking incidents. Note, note, this article covers adults and children over one year of age. Over one age, her. Bob. Method one of two, helping someone else. First, assess the situation. Make sure the person is choking and determine whether it is a partial or total airway obstruction. If a person is experiencing mild choking or partial airway obstruction, you are better off letting him cough to remove the obstruction himself if it is mild or partial. So next, next step, ask the person. Ask the person if, like, ask the person like, are you choking? If the person can respond to you verbally, wait. Someone who is really choking will not able to speak at all, but they may shake, shake their hands yes or no. It is important that you do not use back blows, back, bo back blows or here. <laughs> On a person who has partial airway obstruction, because there is a risk of lodging the previously semi-loose object more deeply and potentially causing a total obstruction. So... Do not give back blows if it if it is partial lang. Kasi there's a possibility if the the object will go more deeply but that will cause totally obstruction. So third, administer first aid. If the person is choking severely or suffering from a total airway obstruction and is conscious communicate with your intent to perform first aid it it's a good idea to make sure that someone who is conscious know what you plan to do this will also give him an opportunity to, to let you know if your assistant is welcome next four give back blows note that the following instruction apply to a person sitting or standing. So, bawal sa nakahiga. Like, nakahapa, hapa, kumbaga. So, sitting or standing lang allowed. First, stand behind the person and slightly off to one side. Side, one side. Yung person, sila, yung person na nag nagchuchok, tapos nandito ka sa gilid. If you're right-handed, Stand to the left, and if your left hand does stand to the right, so alternate. Alternate. Next, support the person's chest with one hand and lean the person forward so that the object blocking his airway will ex exit his mouth. 
or so as opposed to going further than the truth. Third, administ administer up to five forceful blows between the person's shoulder blades with the heels of hand or between your palm, palm and wrist. Pose after each blow to see if the blockage has cleared. If not, give up to five abdominal thrust. So yeah, that that's how I'm going to illustrate or demonstrate the back blows. Five, fifth, administer abdominal thrust or hemlich maneuver. That was, it is called hemlich maneuver. The hemlich maneuver is an emergency technique that is only to be used on adults or children older than one year of age. Do not use hemlich maneuver on children under one year old. So, so hemlich maneuver can be applied older than one year of age, not under one year old of age. Next, stand behind the choking victim. Put your arms around his waist. Put your arms around his waist and limb on him. And limb him forward. Forward. <laughs> Make a fist with your hand and place it directly above the person navel or belly button. Belly button but below the breastbone. So, suksukan. Suksukan here. Make a fist. Ganito siguro. Ganito. <laughs> and put your other hand on the top of your fist. Put your hand at the top of your fist. Ah, here. Ganon. Then, thrust both hands backwards into their stomach with a hard upward movement. New mission. Never mind. Ganon. Upward. Upward movement. Ha. Tapos, ganon. Siyempre, may person dito. Kaso wala. And do this thrusting action up to five times. Five times. Check after each thrust to see if the blockage is gone. Stop if the victim loses consciousness. So that's it. Six. Modify the hemlish maneuver for pregnant women and people who are obese. So, may iba ring hemlish maneuver sa pregnant women and obese people. Um, place your hands higher than described above in the regular, regular pala tawag yung common, hemlich maneuver technique. Your hands should be at the base of the breastbone, just above where the lower ribs join. Press hard into the chest with quick thrust as described above. However, here, however, you will not able to make the same upward thrust. Repeat until the person stops choking and the blockage is dislodged or he falls unconscious. So, it, it is different from pregnant women and obese people from regular hemorrhage. 7. Make sure that the object is completely gone here. Once the airway is cleared, parts of the object that cause the person to choke can remain behind. If the person is able, ask the victim to spit it out and breath without difficulty. Look to see if there is something blockage the airway. If there is, you can also do a slip through the person's mouth with your finger. <laughs> <Ganun. Huh. laughs> Only sweep if you see an object, otherwise you could push it further back. Se eight. Check to see if normal breathing has returned. Restore, return, normal breathing. Once the object is gone, most people will return their breathing normally. If normal breathing has not returned or if the person loses consciousness, move to the next step here. 9. Administer, administer help if the person falls unconscious. If a if a choking person falls unconscious, lower him on his back on the floor, then clear the airway if, if possible. If you can see the blockage, 
take your finger and sweep it out of the throat and out through the mouth don't do a finger sweep if you don't see an object so yeah pag wala ka naman nakita don't do it be careful not to and advertently push the obstruction deeper into the airway so be careful be careful lang tayo pag pag maglalagay tayo ng finger to remove the blockage obstruction so then last from the method helping other consult a physician if after choking the person experiences a persistent cough any difficulty breathing, breathing or a feeling that something is still stuck in his throat he should see he should see a medical professional immediately abdominal thrust can also cause internal injuries and bruising if you use this tactic or perform CPR on another person, he should be checked out by the physician afterwards. We are advisable to consult a physician if that the the obstruction is totally gone. If not, so method two of two helping yourself, yourself, na man, yourself. Next. Number one, call emergency services or call EMS system. Call 911. If you're alone and choking, call 911 or your local emergency number immediately. Even if you can speak, most emergency services still send someone to check out all calls. Hmm. Number two, after calling 911, Perform the hemlish maneuver on yourself. Yourself, You may not be able to do this as forcefully as someone else, but you can still try to dislodge the item. First, make a fist. Place it on your abdomen, just above your navel. navel. Second, hold that fist with your other hand. Bend over a chair, table, counter, or other solid object. Drive your fist in and up as described above. Here. Hmm. Repeat until the object is removed or until assistance arrives. And lastly, make sure the object is completely gone. Try to spit it out, the object, and any of its remnants remaining. So, last. Third, consult a physician. If you experience a persistent cough, any difficulty breathing or a feeling that something is stuck in your throat, see a medical professional immediately. Abdominal thrust can also cause serious injuries. So if you have used this tactic on yourself, you should be examined by a physician afterwards. So that's it. So... That's the ending of, of, of my reporting about the foreign body of obstruction or FBAL. And thank you. Thank you for listening. <laughs> thank you for listening from my report. I hope you classmates understand my reporting. And then thank you mom for giving this opportunity to share this report with you. All of you. Thank you and God bless. Bye.